to whoever finds this. The date is the 13th of March, 2020. My name is Rohan Francis, and I am a survivor. Pandemic pandemonium has gripped the country. I saw a man today, wild, feral, crying in the street. I asked him what was wrong, and he told me, oh God, it's inhumane what people are going through. He told me that he was down to his last 600 rolls of toilet paper. This is my third COVID-19 video, and I was intending to make a video about either a scientific look at how coronavirus affects the heart and the lungs and what we actually do in intensive care, or a dedicated look at how it will affect hospitals and healthcare professionals. But I'll be honest, I've, I've sat here the whole day struggling to know how to even start either of those topics. It's 25 past one in the morning now. I felt frankly overwhelmed by the deluge of information coming at us from every angle, and I'm sure you have too. I've seen real anxiety amongst some of my friends, so I do hope still to, to get to those topics. But reading the public opinion right now and seeing how panic appears to be setting in as schools and flights and offices and the NBA are all shut down, I thought I'd make a quick interim video to assuage at least some of those fears, I hope, without ignoring any of the facts nor burying our heads in the sand. If you're in Europe or North America, you'll probably have noticed a shift in public perception just this week because we're at the point in our exponential growth curve when things are really taking off. That's how exponential growth works. And the fact that we're collectively surprised by it is disappointing on two counts, because it means that we as a society don't A, understand maths, which I think we all knew anyway, and B, we haven't really been paying attention to what's going on in other countries, or we have and somehow we thought that we would be better or would be exempt. But I hear you say, I thought this was going to be a positive video. You're right. Um, the only reason I mention our country's poor leadership is to highlight what you can do. Our politicians are idiots, but they've always been idiots. Sure, there's nothing like a crisis to highlight that idiocy, but this is nothing new. So if our leaders aren't going to lead, then you should. So here are some reasons to be positive. Reason number one, you can make a difference. Take the lead at your workplace, at school, be a paragon of the advice that we all know by now. Meticulous hand washing, distancing yourself from others, avoiding unnecessary meetings, staying at home when possible, and in particular, isolating yourself if you're sick. The time has passed to worry about being teased for being overdramatic. It's much better to overreact in a productive way than to fail to take this seriously. For example, a criticism often leveled at me is that I'm too laid back to the point of being almost horizontal. And I tend to be devoid of human emotions. So I surprised myself that I was the most proactive in a group of doctors with whom I was planning to go to a big social event this weekend. And I said, look, I just don't think it's the right thing to do at the moment. I got some funny comments, a bit of pushback, but you know what? It'll all be forgotten about in a few weeks. We can all be that person willing to take the first step. I've got a severely disabled brother Many of us have elderly parents or grandparents, and even if you don't, your friends definitely do. Think of them. I met a friend the other day, and when she went to hug me, I went, eh. Now, I mean, I've been reacting the same way to physical contact with non-family members for about 30 years, but at least now I can blame the virus. I've seen a lot of people with good intentions say that this is less deadly than cancer or road traffic accidents, and I get what they're trying to do, but I don't think that's particularly helpful. I can't personally do anything about those other causes of death except for not knocking over people in my car. And they're constant, unchanging from day to day, but COVID-19 is growing rapidly and we can make a difference to that. I also think tweets like Elon Musk saying, extrapolating exponential growth is stupid and scaremongering is also not particularly helpful because no epidemiologist or statistician is doing that. They understand logistical growth, they correct for the virus slowing down, and they're still concerned. You can be reassuring without just ignoring the facts and talking nonsense. You've probably seen this graph or heard the phrase flatten the curve. So what's that all about? Well, simply put, countries which are not on total lockdown are not going to contain the virus. That chance has essentially passed, which is fine. We're not looking for total cessation of spread, but what we can do is delay the virus's progress through the population. 
So even if isolation, hand washing, closing public places doesn't significantly reduce the eventual overall number, it might spread the effect out. The area under the curve doesn't change significantly, but the peak does. So if the same number of people get the illness, why does that matter? Well, because the huge variable here that goes into this is the healthcare system's capacity. A small proportion of infected people will require hospital care, and even smaller proportion will need intensive care. Those beds, those facilities, and the staff are all limited, especially when you factor in the high probability that many healthcare workers will have to be off uh, due to infection. In Italy, we saw what uncontrolled spread did to the health system. It was overwhelmed. If you're under 60 and you have no major medical problems, and by the way, major medical problems means things like heart disease, being on dialysis, severe lung disease, not things like mild to moderate asthma or well-controlled diabetes. Please be mindful of the impact that you will have on the health service. You are highly unlikely to require medical attention. A fever and cough are normal for this infection. But if you're not having difficulties breathing, you're not dizzy due to low blood pressure, I know you might want to know if you had the virus by getting a test. But remember, you're going to be advised to do the same things no matter the result of that test. There's no treatment that you're going to get at the doctor's. So much as it's tempting to want to have that answer, please remember there are others who will need the input of medical services more than you. So flattening the curve means that at any one time there is less impact on the health service and a greater likelihood that we healthcare workers and the hospitals will be able to cope and may even have developed a treatment uh, by then. More on this in the video when I talk about healthcare systems and how they're going to be affected. My dream is to have a coronavirus testing kit in every home. Reason number two. This virus is not an unstoppable monster. It's weak. It's an enveloped virus which is highly susceptible to basic, everyday, cheap soap. The envelope around the virus is basically like a fat droplet, and as we all know, soap breaks up fat. Alcohol gel over 70% also dehydrates this layer. Norovirus, the vomiting bug that you probably heard of from cruise ships and hospital wards, is much harder to get off your hands or surfaces. The virus is not aerosolized, it's not truly airborne. True airborne diseases are things like measles, which if you sneeze, they stay in the air for a very long time and infect many people. This is spread in large respiratory droplets, which after coughing or sneezing, fall to the floor within a few seconds. Once the virus is on a surface, we're not sure quite how long it stays there, Hours, definitely, perhaps a couple of days. However, it can be easily cleaned with regular everyday household cleaning products. Reason number three, the stats are better than you think. There is understandably a lot of interest in the case fatality rate, i.e. what percentage of people who are infected go on to die. But it's more nuanced than just saying the number in isolation. You've probably heard it's around 3% at the moment, but there is no one case fatality rate. It changes. It's drastically different from region to region from time to time. In early January in China, it was over 20%, but rapidly fell to 0.7% by February. South Korea's case fatality rate is much lower than Italy's. Does that mean Korea's hospitals are much better? Probably not. It's all to do with simple maths. The case fatality rate is calculated by dividing the number of deaths by the total number of cases and multiplying by 100. So you can easily see that the larger the denominator, the smaller the rate will be. There will be many, many mild cases that have not been diagnosed. There is a bias towards severity because the mild people don't seek help. Secondly, it depends on how many tests a country is sending. Korea has intensively tested its population, sending off tens of thousands of tests in a short time. America, for example, has not tested many at all. This will affect the case fatality rate. And with time, we're likely to see it go down across the world, just as it has done in China and Korea. Johns Hopkins have suggested the case fatality rate at the end will be at most 0.6%. And for comparison, seasonal flu is 0.1%. Reason number four, we're seeing encouraging results from countries that are further along the chronology. At the time of recording, there have been about 130,000 cases in the world with 70,000 recovered, but the actual um, recovery percentage is likely to be much higher due to the, the way um, that the recovered is defined epidemiologically. China, Korea, Singapore, 
Hong Kong and Taiwan are seeing improvements. Now, China's intensely authoritarian approach is not really an option for most countries, nor do I think it should be, but we can replicate some of the measures taken by Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, and we know that they can make a difference. Reason number five, the scientific community is working around the clock. Most people will be consuming updates about the virus via news channels, but for us in the medical world, we're reading the journals. Let me tell you a little bit about medical journals. When I submit an article, I normally have to wait months until it's accepted and then even longer until it's published. The medical press tends to move really slowly, but I've been blown away by the doctors in China, Korea, the countries that were affected early on, despite being swamped and working around the clock treating patients, losing some of their own ranks, they have been publishing like crazy. So have experts around the world. We're seeing faster turnaround times than I've ever known for scientific publications. And you know what? I'm extremely happy to see proper scientists being listened to by politicians for a change. When the first lab to grow the virus outside China in Melbourne announced their success, they immediately shared their knowledge and their samples. We're seeing incredible cooperation between academics, the WHO, the CDC, and so on. A vaccine might be a while off yet, but we're seeing many potential treatment options being tested. Nature reported over 80 therapeutic trials already underway in February. Drugs such as remdesivir, which was originally tested on Ebola and has some activity against MERS and other uh, coronaviridae, chloroquine, which is a malaria tablet, lapinavir and ritonavir, uh, HIV medications, and baricitinib, which is an arthritis medication are being trialed. ACE2 receptor blockers, which are blood pressure tablets, are also being explored as an option, as ACE2 is the way that coronavirus gets into cells. It kind of makes me think about the HIV and AIDS early days when, again, the scientific community was dealing with something that they hadn't seen before. Now, obviously, what we're seeing today and dealing with is very, very different, but it took years to identify that. We already know what we're dealing with. And I genuinely feel really confident that we've got the brightest and best scientific minds on the case, and we will beat this. Reason number six, kids seem to be the least affected. We're not sure why this is yet. It's not unheard of. I'm sure you know that chicken pox really doesn't bother kids particularly, but it's a nasty illness to adults, so it's not unprecedented. We have some theories, maybe because Kids' immune systems are not as well developed as adults. They don't mount such a pronounced immune response. They don't get that cytokine storm. They have fewer symptoms like fever. Or maybe it's because schools are petri dishes of disease and there may be some degree of cross-immunity due to uh, kids having such frequent colds and sniffles because, of course, a lot of them are caused by members of the coronavirus family, which may be similar to SARS-CoV-2. And finally, bonus reason number seven, which doesn't really apply to everybody watching. Let me speak on behalf of people from the Asian continent. When I say we are watching the toilet paper wars of 2020 and laughing politely and behind our face mask to ourselves. Did you notice there weren't any Asians in the supermarket showdowns because, well, if you know, you know. So Americans, Europeans, friends, once we get through this viral madness, and we will, let one legacy remain with you. There is a better way to clean your bum. No, I, I can't end like that, can I? What I wanted to achieve with this video is to address what we're facing in a light-hearted way, but not to pretend that nothing's going to change. Life is going to be really different for all of us, for a while, months. But we're so much better equipped for this now than at any time in the past. Can you imagine self-isolation at home without the internet? Here in the docks in East London, which was bombed very heavily during World War II, the older generation talk about the blitz spirit during the war. Faced with a much scarier threat than is facing us now, they didn't panic, they pulled together, they supported each other and they got through it. Now that generation are the most at risk and what we all do can make a huge difference. Coronavirus has begun, but how it ends is up to us.